Hi, and welcome to Creative Nonfiction and to our first workshop unit. So first, let's talk a little bit about how the process works in this class. For the next 12 weeks, we're going to be exploring three different genres, creative nonfiction, poetry, and fiction. In each of those genres, we're going to spend three weeks doing exploratory writing in some subgenre. So for instance, in creative nonfiction, we're going to do the memoiristic essay, the lyric essay, and the shtick lit or experiential essay. So you'll be writing one brief essay a week. Then you will spend a fourth week revising. So for the first three weeks, you're going to do peer review on your exploratory writing. You will be, work, be working in small peer review groups as long as the class stays the same size that it is now. Those will be groups of four. So you will be re peer reviewing three other students and submitting your own work for peer review every week. In the fourth week of these units, you will, we will be working on revision. And at the end of the revision week, you will submit one revised piece to me for comments. So out of our exploratory writing, you're going to choose your strongest piece, revise it after peer review, and submit it to me. And I will give you comments so that you can revise it further towards your final portfolio. Our goal is to help anybody who wants to have at least one publishable piece by the end of the semester so that you're really focused on sort of what do I get out of this and on the revision process? Because as we learned in both the Yuknovich and the Lamott, revision is really the magic and the secret to writing. So now I want to talk to you for a minute about what creative nonfiction is and how we work with it. Creative nonfiction is, is a terrible name. Nobody who writes in the genre says that absolutely is the best name we could have for what we do. Uh, I write primarily in the genre and I, I agree with that but it's the word we have for sort of a giant catch-all. There are only a couple of things that bind the different kinds of creative nonfiction together. One is that they are truthful. This doesn't mean you can only write about what happened. It doesn't mean you can't imagine things, but it means that when you write about things you don't know, or when you write about things that you are imagining but know didn't happen, you have to signal the reader. So for instance, we can never know what another person is thinking. But let's say that I'm writing about a time that my mother yelled at me when I was a kid because my room was a mess, which would be pretty much all the time. And I don't know what my mother is thinking. I can do one of two things. If she says to me, I am so exacerbated by this, your room is always a mess. If you don't clean it up, we're going to make you move into the garage. Then I can put it in dialogue. But let's say she just yells, clean up your room, and storms down the hall. I want to let you know that she's exacerbated about it, but I can't say she thinks about how exacerbated she is. But I can say, she. I imagine that she thinks about how exacerbating this is. So as long as you tag something, you're good. There are There is a school of thought that says, yeah, you can make up whatever you want in creative nonfiction. But for this class, I'm gonna ask you to try to stick to the truth and, and think about that as an ethical issue that, that you'll explore later if this becomes your primary genre. I teach a creative nonfiction workshop here at, at UTC. And if you're interested in exploring that, we talk about it a lot in class. So please come and take 3740. For these essays, there are also a couple of other things to keep in mind. One is that I'm a mandatory reporter and I work for the university. And this means a couple of things. First, it means don't write an essay about drinking beer in your dorm room if you're 19, because what you're doing is you're confessing to me that you've broken a rule of the university and I have to do something about it. Similarly, don't confess to me that you have committed a felony. So I know that seems like, like common sense, but sometimes people forget this. So you don't wanna write about underage drinking, you don't wanna write about illicit drug use, you don't want to write about the time that you jacked somebody's car. The one exception to this is that if you are writing about something for which you have already faced the penalty. So let's say that you got a DUI in high school and you got, you've got already been through the court system, then you're fine. You can write about things that have already been adjudicated. But don't give me personal essays about secrets because once you write them down and submit them to a university professor, they're not secrets anymore. The other thing is that I am a mandatory reporter for people who report that they have experienced sexual assault or abuse. This is not a bad thing. 
If you write an essay about having experienced sexual assault or abuse, what I have to do is call the Title IX office, but you shouldn't let that frighten you. As long as it happened off campus and in the past, you will get a call from the Title IX officer who will simply say, would you like us to offer you some services? There's some counseling that we have access to and some other services. If you feel like these would be helpful to you, we're reaching out. If you say yes, then they, they go and they get you really good help. If you say no, they leave you alone. So you shouldn't worry about that. If this is a crime that's been committed on campus, their process is a little more thorough. But I encourage you, if something has happened to you on campus, that you reach out to them yourselves as well, because we don't want that sort of place. Victims have a right to be heard. But I really want to stress here that you want to control what information you give me based on the outcome that you want. That said, there's also a mistaken understanding of creative nonfiction and per particularly the personal essay, that what we want is always trauma writing. It isn't. And you're going to see from the works that we read that you can sometimes write about, about really huge events that are very traumatic. Sometimes also, though, you can write about tiny things, going to the lake. Uh, Virginia Woolf has a very famous essay uh, about a moth in which the only thing that happens is she sits at her desk and looks at a moth. So don't feel like you have to give me your deepest, darkest secrets in order to write a really strong essay. Also, think about what you want your peers to know. Remember that we will be doing peer review and that in creative nonfiction, particularly in life writing, you're telling everybody in your peer review group the information that you put into the essay. All of that is just to say that I want you to be smart and safe in the choices that you make because we're going to be focusing on how you're writing, not on what experiences you've had to write. Don't give us anything either where if we come back and say, gosh, that story about how your dog got hit by a car is really, really moving, but I need to talk to you about the comma problems. If talking to you about the comma problems is going to hurt your feelings, you need to pick a different topic because workshop works that way. Workshop has to be about what we can do, what we can offer you to make the text better, because in creative nonfiction, you can't really change the lived experience. That's a lot of warnings, and I apologize. Creative nonfiction is a little tricky. There will be warnings for, for each genre, but I think the ones for creative nonfiction are particularly intense. Nonetheless, I'm really excited to read your personal essays to learn about your experiences and to learn more about you. And I hope that this next assignment, which is a brief memoiristic essay, will give you an opportunity to explore artful ways to tell your stories. Thank you, and I'll be back again with another video when we get to poetry.